Well, good morning and welcome once again to our wonderful Day in the Lord broadcast as we are working our way at this point through the book of Ephesians. If you recall last week, we began to uh, shift gears a little bit in our study. Uh, er Earlier, we were looking at random texts of Scripture. Now we're working our way through the book of Ephesians. And we're doing that for a number of reasons. First of all, uh, what a wonderful book of Scripture. Uh, Secondly, the study of Scripture systematically and and line by line, verse by verse, and so forth, is the best way to study Scripture. It keeps it in context. It allows us to understand what God is really talking about. Secondly, for those of you that do not have a regular pattern of Bible reading, uh, I'm hoping that you will develop one during this time. As you take your Bibles and, and always ready for the book of Ephesians, and we study it together, working our way through the book uh, each morning, you can uh, join us for five minutes or so, And then hopefully uh, take a few more minutes, maybe five, maybe ten, whatever, and uh, continue in your study and the reading of this wonderful book. And as you do that, you develop perhaps a new pattern. And for those of you that already have a good program going, a good Bible reading uh, program that you really like, uh, this could supplement that. This is sort of like the vitamin pill you, you have before the good meal. And so it'll get you started in the day, and it's something we can do together as a body of Christ and so we hope you're enjoying this and are, are being helped by that. Last time, by the way, I offered to give out uh, some free Bibles, uh, hardback New American Standards, for those that uh, would like to have a, a different version or a different uh, copy so that they can mark in it more uh, freely and so forth. A few of you have taken me up on that offer. And uh, if you're still interested in that, let me know. We still have several copies available. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 1. And we started uh, our ended last week with verse 4, but let me back back up to verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. So we're looking at these spiritual blessings that are true for every Christian. Not mature Christians, not growing Christians, all Christians have these blessings. If you know Christ is your Savior, if you're in Christ, then you have these blessings. Then he ticks off at least six different blessings that are yours, spiritual blessings. The first one was he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. And we saw that one last time in verse 4. Let's press on to verse 5 now. He predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the kind intention of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, which he freely bestowed upon us in the beloved. Here's the second of the different uh, spiritual blessings, adoption. Again, as you're reading the Bible, uh, there's two major things I would ask you to consider. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, observation. What do you what do you observe? We're not looking at in-depth study uh, that you may feel intimidated by, but a, just a careful reading of the of the passage. And each day, as I go through it with you, I'll try to give you some insights that will be helpful to you. But uh, as you look at this, observe that he's talking about adoption. And everybody is familiar with the, the American style of adoption. We, we take someone who is not in our family, a child, and we adopt that child into our family. They take on our name. They become our child. Even though not by blood, they are now legally and rightly in our family. They're adopted. Well, he said God adopted us into his family through Jesus Christ. Uh, Notice in the text here, observing once again, according to the kind intention of his will. So this is all from the mercy and the grace of God because of his kindness. And it goes to the praise of his glory, of his grace, freely bestowed upon us in the beloved, that's Christ, a free gift that he gives us. That's the essence of the passage. Now, bombard the text with some questions. And you could write these down in your journal, as uh, I've recommended before, things that that you may not know the answer to yet, but things you could go back to later. For example, is there anything more about this adoption that perhaps we don't know or should know or like to know that would be helpful in our understanding? So let me just add this, and this is where I try to help you each day to maybe to get a little more insight than you might get just on uh, your own personal reading. But adoption in the Roman system at this time would take a person, it doesn't have to be a child, It could be a full-grown adult. They took that person, adopted them into another family, usually a Roman royalty-type family, a a very powerful family. They took that person into their home, 
And when they did that, their, not only did their name change, but everything about their past changed. If they had a criminal record, it was erased. If they had debts, they were erased. This person now becomes part of the new family, and they also have all the legal rights and all the wealth that is associated with the new family. So to be adopted into the family of God means to us that our sins have been forgiven. They no longer hold any sway in our lives. Our debts have been paid off, spiritually speaking, and now we're in the family of God, and we have, because of what Christ has done, all the riches that are ours in Christ Jesus, all that he has for us, freely bestowed upon us as the beloved. So we're adopted. So that's our lesson for today. Uh, we'll look at the next spiritual blessing tomorrow. You have a wonderful day in the Lord.